she backs up into the trailer and we lock the fucking door. We pull down all the shades except one, and put a guy there in a chair to watch her. She stands there for another 20 minutes or so. The guy turns to say that she's still there. And there's a huge fucking bang on the door. We all jump the fuck up and scramble around the living room of the trailer. The banging is super fucking loud. So now my cousin is holding one of the girls and the other two are kinda giggling with nervous laughter and me and the other two guys are shitting bricks. Then we hear Dan. He's screaming. Let me the fuck in, stop fucking playing. So we go over to the door and open it, and he stumbles in with a rifle. There's nobody else outside. Evidently, he had walked up to the campsite. Nothing weird happened in the forest, but he had seen a girl. Mind you, he said it was not Kira standing there. When he had gotten to the edge of the clearing, she had turned toward him with a slack-jawed look and just stared him down, slowly tracking him as he walked around the outside of the clearing towards the camp. He said it wasn't till he was almost halfway to the trailer he had realized that she was getting closer to him. She had started off by the fire, and without him even seeing her move she had been turning, inching closer. He said he just ran the rest of the way back to the cabin thinking it would open. And when he got to the door and it was locked, he turned and it was about half the distance to the door. He looks around the room and then gets super pale. He pulls me to the side and whispers in my ear, You know there are only seven of us in here, right? I get that feeling where your stomach drops to your nuts. It had been back inside the trailer while we were sorting out who was going where, and then when we all went outside to talk earlier in the day. It has just slipped right back in. We looked out the window and there is nobody out there. So we recount everyone and then basically, I go over and ask everyone how many people were here earlier. And everybody says eight. I say, well, how many are here now? They all do the count and then realize there are only now seven people in the cabin. So Tan had brought back a couple boxes of ammo and his rifle. And he had told his dad that there was some kind of animal in the forest because he didn't think his dad would believe him if he said it was Goatman. He says that his cousin is supposed to be coming down in a few hours and that in the morning we can all go back to his place and his cousin will drive us home. Now I'm really fucking terrified. But I at least feel better because we can be American and shoot the fuck out of whatever it is if it comes back. But then my cousin gets into this huge argument with one of the girls because she thinks that I'm trying to be funny and prank them, and that she's getting really scared and that I'm not funny. He keeps telling her I'm not that kind of person, and she says, well, how do we know the girl wasn't just Anna in a wig? Or if it's really the Goatman? How do we know that this is the real Tanner and that Goatman just didn't kill Tanner in the woods and take his gun? So we fucking get into a huge argument about this, where me and Tan are like, we could seriously be in danger because at the very least someone has been sneaking themselves into our fucking trailer without us knowing and mingling with us, and at worst, something bad is in the forest fucking with us. One of the girls is crying and saying she wants to go right now. And we're trying to tell her we shouldn't because none of us are walking through the woods in the middle of the night. At this point the sun is starting to go down and it's getting a little cloudy out. We eat something and turn on the radio for a while, but we can't really get a station out there with anything decent. So we turn it off at about the time that Tan's cousin shows up. He was like 19, I think. At this point... The sun is just barely over the horizon and he has one of those heavy-duty lantern flashlights and another rifle. He walks up to the trailer and we whisper to Tan asking if he's sure that's his cousin and he says yes. The guy looks behind him and all around the camp, then walks in. He kind of glances at all of us and looks a little confused. He says, where's your other little buddy at? I figured she would meet me up at the cabin. Is she a little slow or something? He also asked whether we had been cooking blood in the cabin, because it smelled like blood and hot pants all the way up the trail. We are all like fucking nope. But we ask him what the fuck he's talking about with the girl he saw. He had come down the same trail Tan had been using and he had come up on one of Yao Sky's buddies standing in the middle of the trail, looking at him slack-jawed. He had asked her a bunch of questions, but all she did was just look at him. Then. 
She smiled at him and he said he kept walking. She couldn't seem to keep up with him and kept lagging a little behind him. He said he asked her if she was hurt or something, and if she needed any help. But, she had continued to stare. Eventually, he had been walking and turn around a bend in the trail. But when he turned around and went back to see if she was okay, the trail was empty. He'd assumed she had taken some shortcut through the woods to our trailer. We tell him the whole story of what's been going on. I half expected him to say we were full of shit, but he just listened and then sat down on the couches in the living room. Danner's cousin gets back to the girl. He says, when she had kept trying to lag behind him, it had kinda weirded him the fuck out, so he tried to keep her in front of him, but no matter how slow he walked, she was always lagging a little behind. And that he smelled this nasty smell, and it got stronger as he got to the camp. Eventually it got really strong. She had said something really low that he didn't catch, and when he had turned around she had been right the fuck up on him, and he stepped back from her. It was at this point he asked her if she was okay, and if she wasn't, him to carry her back the rest of the way, and she just kept staring. He said he reached out for her, as in to grab her on the shoulder, but he must have misjudged the distance because she was off to the side of where he had put his hand, like she had moved while he was looking dead at her. So at this point, we know this shit's real, unless Dan is playing a joke, which we can tell he's not because he's almost pissing his pants.